Hi friends, welcome again with the new story. This is the part of video series of famous personalities and their life story. In this channel, we make videos in read along format. That means when I narrate the story, simultaneously you can read the story in your mind along with me from the text written on the video screen. As I say always, the benefit of listening and reading at the same time is it helps us in more clear understanding of the story and it helps us to remember the story as the process helps in registering the story in, in our brain. If you are new to this channel, do subscribe the channel to get more video updates. Today's video is on Sir Isaac Newton, the famous scientist who inspired the generations of people around the globe. The name is itself is iconic, surrounded with the many facts and stories. Let us see some of this in this video. Biography of Sir Isaac Newton Sir Isaac Newton was an English mathematician, physicist and scientist. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential scientists of all time. Developing new laws of mechanics, gravity and laws of motion, his work Principia Mathematica laid the framework for the scientific revolution of the 17th century, a great polymath. Newton's investigations also included area of optics, religion and alchemy. Let's see early life of Newton. Sir Isaac Newton was born on Christmas Day in 1643 to a relatively poor family, farming family. His father died three months before he was born. His mother later remarried, but her second husband did not get, a, get on with Isaac, leading to friction between Isaac and his parents. The young Isaac attended school at King's School, Grantham in Lincolnshire, where his signature is still inscribed on the walls. Isaac was one of the top students, but before completing his studies, his mother withdrew him from school, so Isaac could work as a farmer. It was only through the inventions of the headmaster that Isaac was able to return to finish his studies. He passed his final exams with very good results and was able to go to Trinity College of Cambridge. If his headmaster would have not intervened, maybe Isaac would have not been able to finish his studies. Life of Newton at Cambridge This is the photo of Sir Isaac Newton. At Cambridge, he was able to pursue his interests in mathematics, science and physics. At the time, the prevailing education was based on Aristotle, but Isaac was more interested in modern mathematics such as René Descartes. Isaac Newton had a pro pro prodigious capacity to consider mathematical problems and then focus on them until he had solved the mystery behind them. His one-pointed one nature led him to at times be detached from the world. For example, he had little time for women. An early teenage romance came to nothing and he remained single throughout his life. Some of Isaac Newton's discoveries Newton made discoveries in optics, motion and mathematics. Newton theorized that white light was a composite of all colors of the spectrum and that light was composed of particles. His momentous book on physics, Principia, contains information on nearly all of the essential concepts of physics except energy, ultimately helping him to explain the laws of motion and the theory of gravity. Along with mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz, Newton is credited for developing essential theories of calculus. Some of Isaac Newton's inventions Newton's first major public scientific achievement was designing and construction, constructing a reflecting telescope in 1668. As a professor of Cambridge, Newton was required to deliver an annual course of lectures and choose optics as his initial topic. He used his telescope to study optics and help prove his theory of light and color. The Royal Society asked for demonstration of his reflecting telescope in 1671 and the organization's interest encouraged Newton to publish his notes on light, optics and color in 1672. These notes were later published as part of Newton's optics or a treatise of reflection, refractions, inflection, inflections and colors of light. Sir Isaac Newton had been referred to as one of the greatest geniuses of history. His mathematical and scientific achievement 
give credence to such a view. His many accomplishments in the field of science include about developing a theory of calculus. Unfortunately, at the same time as Newton calculus was being developed by Leibniz, at the same time as Newton calculus was being developed by Leibniz, while Leibniz published his results, there was a bitter feud between the two men, with Newton claiming plagiarism. The bitter feud led, lasted until Leibniz's death in 1713. It also extended between British mathematicians and the continent. Some of mathematical achievements of Newton generalized binomial theorem, Newton's identities, Newton's method, classified cubic plane curves, polynomials of degree, polynomials of degree 3 and 2 var variables, substantial contributions to the theory of infinite differences, use of fractional in indices, use geometry to derive solutions to Diopatin equations, use power series with confidence and to reward power series. Discovered a new formula for pi. Some scientific achievements of Newton. Optics. Newton made great advancement in the study of optics. In particular, he developed the spectrum by splitting white light through a prism. Telescope. Made significant improvements to the development of the telescope. However, when his ideas were criticized by Hope, Newton withdrew from the public debate. He developed an antagonistic and hostile attitude to Hope throughout his life. Mechanics and Gravitation In his famous book Principia Mathematica, Newton explained the three laws of motion that laid the framework for modern physics. This involved explaining planetary movements. Newton and Apple Connection The most popular anecdote about Sir Isaac Newton is the story of how the theory of gravitation came to him. After being hit on the head with falling apple, in reality Newton and his friends may have exaggerated the story. Nevertheless, it is quite likely that seeing apples fall from trees may have influenced his theory of gravity. So let's see the apple myth. Between 1665 and 1667, Newton returned home from Trinity College to pursue his private study. As school was closed due to great plague, legend has it that at this time Newton experienced this famous inspiration of gravity with the falling apple. According to this common myth, Newton was sitting under an apple tree with a fruit fell and hit him on the head, inspiring him to suddenly come up with the theory of gravity. While there is no evidence that the apple actually hit Newton on the head, he did see an apple fall from a tree, leading him to wonder why it fell stra straight down and not an at an angle. Consequently, he began exploring the theories of motion and gravity. It was during this 18-month hiatus as a student that Newton con conceived many of his most important insights including the method of inf infinite simul calculus, the foundation of his theory of light and color, and the laws of planetary motion, that eventually led to the publication of his physics, book Principia, and his theory of gravity. Some scientific work, Principia, and Newton's three laws of motion. In 1687, following 18 months of intense and effectively non-stop work, Newton published Philosophy Naturals, Principia Mathematica, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy Most often known as Principia, it is said to be a single most influential book on physics and possibly all of science. Its publication immediately raised Newton to international prominence. Principia offers an exact quantitative description of bodies in motion with three basic laws of motion. A stationary body will stay stationary unless an external force is applied to it. Second, force is equal to mass times acceleration and a change in motion that is change in speed is proportional to the force applied. And third, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Some scientific theories Newton and the theory of gravity. Newton's three basic laws of motion outlined in Principia helped him arrive at his theory of gravity. Newton's law of universal gravitation states that the two objects attract each other with a force of gravitational attraction that is proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. These laws help explain not only elliptical planetary orbits, but nearly every other motion in the universe. How the planets are kept in orbit by the pull of the sun's gravity, how the moon revolves around the sun and moons of the Jupiter revolve around it, and how comets revolve in the elliptical orbits around the sun. They also allowed him to calculate the mass of each planet, calculate the flattening of the earth at the poles, 
and the bulge at the equator and how the gravitational pull of the sun and moon create the earth's tides in newton's account gravity keep kept the universe balance made it work and brought heaven and earth together in one great equation newton's religious beliefs and his thoughts on the topic as well as being a scientist newton actually spent more time investigating religious issues he read the bible daily believing it to be the word of god nevertheless he was not satisfied with the christian interpretations of the bible for example he rejected the philosophy of the holy trinity he believed his beliefs were closer to the christian beliefs in arianism basically there was a difference between jesus christ and god let us see newton's bible code newton was fascinated with the early church and also the last chapter of bible revelation he spent many hours poring over the bible trying to find the secret bible code he was rumored to be rosicri rosicrucian the religious believed that newton had could have caused serious embarrassment at that time because of this he kept his views hidden almost to the point of obsession this desire for secrecy seemed to be part of his nature it was only on his death that his papers were opened up the bishop who first opened newton's book actually found them too shocking for public release therefore they were kept closed for many more years let us again look in detail about early life of newton and family isaac newton was the only son of prosperous local farmer also named isaac newton who died 3 months before he was born a premature baby born tiny and weak newton was not expected to survive when he was 3 years old his mother hannah Ascog Newton remarried a well-to-do minister Barnabas Smith and went to live with him leaving young Newton and his maternal grandmother the experience left an indelible imprint on Newton later manifesting itself as an acute sense of insecurity he anxiously obsessed over the published work defending its merits with irrational behavior at age 12 Newton was reunited with his mother after her second husband died She brought along her three small children from her second marriage. Isaac Newton's education and qualification. Newton was enrolled at the King's School in Grantham, a town in Lincolnshire, where he lodged with a local apothecary and was introduced to the fascinating world of chemistry. His mother pulled him out of school at age 12. Her plan was to make him a farmer and have him tend the farm. Newton failed miserably as he found farming monotonous. Newton was soon sent back to King's School to finish his basic education. Perhaps sensing the young man's innate intellectual abilities, his uncle, a graduate of the University of Cambridge Trinity College, persuaded Newton's mother to have him enter the university. Newton enrolled in a program similar to a work study in 1661 and subsequently waited on tables and took care of well their student rooms. When Newton arrived at Cambridge, the scientific revolution of the 17th century was already in full force. The heliocentric view of the universe, theorized by astronomers Nicolaus Copernicus and Johannes Kepler, and later refined by Galileo, was well known in most European academic circles. Philosopher René Descartes has begun the, to formulate a new concept of nature as an intricate, impersonal, and inert machine. Yet, like most universities in Europe, Cambridge was t- steeped in Aristotelian philosophy and view of nature resting on a ge- geocentric view of the universe dealing with nature in qualitative rather than quantitative terms during his first three years at cambridge newton was taught the standard curriculum but was fascinated with the more advanced science all his spare time was spent reading from the modern philosophers the result was less than still a performance but one that is understandable given his dual course of study it was during this time that newton kept a second set of notes entitled questions quantum philo- philosophic that is certain philosophical questions the questions revealed that newton had discovered the new concept of nature that provided the framework for the scientific revolution though newton graduated without on honors of distinction his effort won him the title of scholar and four years of financial support for future education in 1665 the great plague that was ravaging europe had came to cambridge forcing the university to close after a two years hiatus newton returned to cambridge in 1667 and was elected a minor fellow at trinity college as he was still not considered a standout scholar in the ensuing years his fortune improved 
Newton received his Master of Arts degree in 1669 before he was 27. During this time, he came across Nicholas Mercator's published book on methods for dealing with infinite series. Newton quickly wrote a treatise, De Analysi, expounding his own wider ranging results. He shared this with friend and mentor Isaac Barrow, but didn't include his name as author. In June 1669, Barrow shared the unaccredited manuscript with British mathematician John Collins. In August 1669, Barrow identified its author to Collins as Mr. Newton, very young but out of extraordinary genius and proficiency in these things. Newton's work was brought to the attention of the mathematics community for the first time. Shortly afterward, Barrow resigned his Lucasian professorship at Cambridge and Newton assumed the chair. Take a look on Isaac Newton and Robert Hooke. Not everyone at the Royal Academy was enthusiastic about Newton's discoveries in optics and 1672 publication of optics, or a treatise of the reflection, refraction, inflection, and color of light among the dis dissenters with Robert Hooke, one of the original members of the Royal Academy and a scientist who was accomplished in a number of areas, including mechanics and optics. While Newton theorized the light, that light was composed of particles, who believed it was composed of waves. Who quickly condemned Newton's paper in conden condescending terms and attacked Newton's methodology and conclusions. Who was not the only one to question Newton's work in optics. Renowned Dutch scientist Christian Huygens and a number of French Jesuits also raised objections. But because of Hooke's association with the Royal Society and his own work in optics, his criticism stung Newton's the worst. Unable to handle the critic, he went into rage, a reaction to criticism that was, was to continue throughout his life. Newton denied Hooke's charge that his theories had any shortcomings and argued the importance of his discoveries to all of science. In the ensuing, ensuing months, the exchange between the two men grew more acrimonious and soon Newton threatened to quit the society altogether. He remained only when several other members assured him that fellows held him in high esteem. Isaac of all trades In English scientist and mathematician Isaac Newton is most famous for his law of gravitation and was instrumental in the science scientific revolution of the 17th century. Above a photo of Newton investigation light a portrayal of Isaac Newton created by a J. A. Huston circa 1879. The rivalry between Newton and Hooke would continue, continue for several years. Therefore, then in 1678, Newton suffered a complete nervous breakdown and the correspondence abruptly ended. The death of his mother the following year caused him to become even more isolated and for six years he withdrew from intellectual exchange. Except when others initiated correspondence, which he always kept short. During his ideas from public life, Newton returned to his study of gravitation and its effects on the orbits of planets. Ironically, the impetus that put Newton on the right direction in this study came from Robert Hooke. In 1679, letter of general correspondence to Royal Society members for contributions, Hooke wrote to Newton and brought up the questions of planetary motion suggesting that a formula involving the inverse square might explain the attraction between planets and the shape of their orbits. Subsequent exchanges transpi transpired before Newton quickly broke off the correspondence once again, but Hooke's idea was soon incorporated into Newton's work on planetary motion, and from his note, it appears he had quickly drawn his own conclusions by 1680, though he kept the, his discoveries to himself. In early 1684, in a conversation with fellow Royal Society members Christopher Wren and Edmund Halley, Hooke made his case on the proof for planetary motion. Both Wren and Halley thought he was on to something but pointed out that a mathematical demonstration was needed. In August 1684, Halley travelled to Cambridge to visit with Newton, who was coming out of his seclusion. Halley ideally asked him what shape the orbit of a planet would take if its attraction of the, to the sun followed the inverse square of the distance between them, Hooke's theory. Newton knew the answer due to his concentrated work for the past six years and replied an, an ellipse. Newton claimed to have evolved the problems some 18 years prior during his hiatus from Cambridge and the plague, but he was unable to find his notes. Halley persuaded him to work out 
the problem mathematically and offered to pay all costs so that the ideas may, might be published, which it was in the Newton's Principia. Upon the publication of the first edition of Principia in 1687, Robert Hooke immediately accused Newton of plagiarism, claiming that he had discovered the theory of inverse squares and that Newton had stolen his work. The charge was unfounded as most scientists knew for Hooke had only theorized on the idea and had never brought it to, the, to any level of proof. Newton, however, was furious and strongly defended his discoveries. He withdrew all references to Hooke in his notes and threatened to withdraw from publishing the subsequent edition of Principia altogether. Halley, who had invested much of, his, of himself in Newton's work, tried to make peace between the two men. While Newton begrudgingly agreed to insert a joint acknowledgement of Hooke's work shared with Wren and Halley in his discussion and the law of inverse squares, it, it did nothing to practice Hooke. As the years went on, Hooke's life began to unravel. His beloved niece and companion died the same year. The Principia was published in 1687. As Newton's repu reputation and fame grew, Hooke's decline caused him to become even more bitter and loathsome towards his rival. To the very end, Hooke took every opportunity he could to offend, offend Newton. Knowing that his rival would soon be elected president of the Royal Society, Hooke refused to retire until the year of his death in 1703. Newton and alchemy, his works. Newton was also interested in alchemy. He experimented on many objects. Using a lot of mercury, very high levels of mercury in his bloodstream may have contributed to his early death and irregularities in late, later, li later life. Newton was made a member of the Royal Society in 1703. He was also given the job of Master of Mint in 1717. He took this job seriously and unofficially was responsible for moving England from the silver stand standard to the gold standard. Newton was an extraordinary polymath. The universe simply fascinated him. He thought to discover the hidden and outer mysteries of life. With his sharp intellect and power of concentration, he was able to contribute to tremendous developments in many areas of science. He was a unique individual. John Maynard Keynes, a 20th century genius, said of Newton, I do not think that anyone who has poured over the contents of that box, which he packed up when he finally left Cambridge in 1696 and thought part, partly disappeared, have come down to us, can see him like that. Newton was not the first of the age of reason. He was the last of the magicians, the last of the Babylonians and Sumerians, the last great mind which looked out on the visibly visible and intellectual world with the same eyes as those who began to build an intellectual inheritance rather less than 10,000 years ago. Isaac Newton, a posthumous child born with no father of, on Christmas Day 1642, was the last wonder child to whom the Maggie could do sincere and appropriate homage. Let's know more of, on Newton and alchemy. Following the publication of Principia, Newton was ready for a new direction in life. He no longer found contentment in his position at Cambridge and was becoming more involved in other issues. He helped lead to resistance to King James II attempts to reinstitute Catholic teachings at Cambridge and in 1689 he was elected to represent Cambridge in Parliament. While in London, Newton acquainted himself with broader group of intellectuals and became acquainted with political philosopher John Locke. Though many of the scientists on the continent continued to tease the mechanical world, were, according to the Aristotle, a young generation of British scientists become captivated with Newton's new views of the physical world and recognize him as their leader. One of these admirers was Nicholas Fatio Duller, a Swiss mathematician whom Newton befriended while in London. However, within a few years, Newton fell into another nervous breakdown. In 1693, the cause is open to speculation. His disappointment over not being appointed to a higher position by England's new monarch William III and Mary II, or the subsequent loss of his friendship with Duller, exhaustion from being overworked, or perhaps chronic mercury poisoning after decades of alchemical research. It is difficult to know the exact cause, but evidence suggests that letters written by Newton to several of his London acquaintances and friends, including Duller, seem dearranged and paranoid and accused them of betrayal and conspiracy. Oddly enough, Newton recovered quickly wrote letters of apology to friends and was back to work within a few months. 
He emerged with all his intellectual facilities intact, but seemed to have lost interest in scientific problems and now favored pursuing prophecy and scripture and the study of alchemy. While some might see this is as work beneath the man who have revolutionized science, it may be more properly attributed to Newton's respond or Newton's responding to issues of the time in turbulent 17th century Britain. Many intellectuals were grappling with the meaning of many different subjects, not least of which were religion, politics, and the very purpose of life. Modern science was still so new that no one knew for sure how it measured up against older philosophies. Most important, changing the British currency from silver to gold standard. In 1697, Newton was able to attain the governmental position he had long sought, Warden of the Mint. After acquiring this new title, he permanently moved to London and lived with his niece, Catherine Barton. She was the mistress of Lord Halifax, a high-ranking government official who was instrumental in having Newton promoted in 1699 to Master of the Mint, a position that he would hold until his death. Not wanting it to be considered a mere honorary position, Newton approached the job in earnest, reforming the currency and severely puni punishing counterfeits as Master of the Mint. Newton moved the British currency, the pound sterling, from the silver to the gold standard. His professional problems, the Royal Society of and conflicts with other scientists. In 1703, Newton was elected president of the Royal Society upon Robert Hooke's death. However, Newton never seemed to understand the notion of science as cooperative venture, and his ambition and fierce defense of his own discoveries continued to lead him from one conflict to another with other sci scientists. By most accounts, Newton's tenure at the society was tyrannical and autocratic. He was able to control the lives of the and careers of young scientists with absolute power. In 1705, in a con controversy that had been brewing for several years, German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz publicly accused Newton of plagiarizing his research, claiming he had discovered infinite symbol calculus several years before the publication of Principia. In 1712, the Royal Society appointed a committee to investigate the matter. Of course, since Newton was president of the society, he was able to appoint the committee members and oversee its investigation. Not surprisingly, the committee concluded Newton's prior over the discovery. That same year, in another of Newton's more flagrant episodes of tyranny, he published without permission the notes of astronomer John Flamsteed. It seemed the astronomer had collected a massive body of data from his years of the Royal Observatory at Greenwich, England. Newton had requested a large volume of Flamsteed notes from his revisions to Principia. An odd when Flamsteed would provide him with more information as quickly as he wanted. Newton used his influence as president of the Royal Society to be named the chairman of the body of visitors responsible for the Royal Observatory. He then tried to force the immediate publication of Flamsteed's catalog of the stars as well as all of Flamsteed's notes, edited and unedited to add insult to injury. Newton arranged for Flamsteed more mortal enemy. Edmund Halley to prepare the notes for press. Flamsteed was finally able to get a court order forcing Newton to seize his plans for publication and return the notes, one of the few times that Newton was bested by one of his rivals. Newton's final years. Towards the end of his life, Newton lived at Cranberry Park near Winchester, England, with his niece Catherine Barton Conduct and her husband John Conduct. By this time, Newton had become one of the most famous men in Europe. His scientific discoveries were unchallenged. He also had become wealthy, investing his sizable income wisely and bestowing sizable gifts to charity. Despite his fame, Newton's life was far from perfect. He never married and made many friends. In his later years, a combination of pride, insecurity, and side trips of peculiar scientific inquiries led even some of his few friends to worry about the mental stability. Isaac Newton's death. By the time he reached 8 years of age, Newton was experiencing his digestion problems and had to drastically change his diet and mobility. In March 1727, Newton experienced severe pain in his abdomen and blanked out, never to regain consciousness. He died the next day on March 31, 1727, at the age of 84. And the legacy remains. Isaac Newton's fame grew even more after his death, as many of his contemporaries proclaimed him the greatest genius who ever lived. Maybe a slight exaggeration, of, but his discoveries had a large impact on Western thought, leading to com comparisons to the likes of Plato, Aristotle, and Galileo. 
Although his discoveries were among many made during the scientific revolution, Isaac Newton's universal principle of gravity found no parallels in science at the time. Of course, Newton was proven wrong on some of his key assumptions. In the 20th century, Albert Einstein would overturn Newton's concept of the universe, stating that space, distance, and motion were not absolute but relative, and that the universe was more fantastic than Newton's had ever conceived. Newton might not have been surprising the later year when asking for assessment of his achievements. He replied, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then in finding a smoother pebble or prettier shell than ordinary, while the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. And this was the story which surrounds Halo of Glowing Light. This person has given so much to the world of which our generations are reaping the benefit. It said, sun shines on everyone, but only genius captures it. Wind blows on everyone, but only genius uses it. Rain falls on everyone, but only geniuses can observe it. And same way, blessings shower on everyone, but only that genius realizes it and use it for the mankind. Hope this story has inspired you in some way. Keep listening to upcoming videos. Do like the video and comment your thoughts on the topic. If you are new, then subscribe this channel. Do share this video with your near and dear. I will come back with a new story soon. Till then, enjoy your life.